This is a presentation about Fenwick English for a master's level curriculum and assessment course at Northwest Nazarene University, the father of the curriculum audit by Ashley Lover. Fenwick English, is that British? An audit, doesn't that have to do with my taxes? Curriculum, that's education, but who knows what definition you're working with? I know, I have an idea. I can look on the internet. Okay, let's see here. I know I learned some search tools in tech class, but I'll just stick with Google. Mm, bingo, I found something. But first, let's talk about what we want to learn. We want to learn how Fenwick English had an impact on education of his time and how it has had a lasting effect on our education system today. You know how we thought Fenwick English sounded British? He's not. He was actually born in Los Angeles, California in 1939. His dad was a middle school woodshop teacher and his mom was a music teacher. They were both accomplished pianists. Fenwick started college at University of Southern California in 1956 and graduated in 1961 with a bachelor's in English and education. After graduating, he began teaching third grade and then quickly decided to go back to school. He earned a master's in school administration in 1963 from the University of Southern California. He quickly moved through the ranks as he became a middle school teacher, then assistant principal, finally middle school principal, and central project director for Temple City USD. It was during his five years in these positions that he wrote his first book titled Differentiated Staffing, Giving Teaching a Chance to Improve Learning. In 1970, he was asked to be a project director and visiting lecturer. This project was funded by Arizona State University. Fenwick was allowed to reorganize three pilot schools in the Mesa School District, he reorganized each pilot school along slightly different models and then measured performance differences. There was clear improvement, and the time in these schools allowed him to do his practical research, which he would later turn into his dissertation that was completed in 1972. After that, English was hired in Sarasota County, Florida, as Assistant Superintendent for Personnel and Program Development. The district had 25,000 students, and yet he was just as effective as he was in Arizona. National recognition gave him exposure, and he documented his ideas and work in multiple books. About this time, Jimmy called. Well, not really. It was his administration. They were moving to have a cabinet-level Department of Education. English was hired as the National Practice Director, North American Continent for Elementary and Secondary Education in the Washington, D.C. office. Consulting business opened his eyes to a whole new set of tools. Business auditing and accounting practices were well refined and formed the core of the business. He wondered if the same principles could be applied to educational administration. Fenwick caught on to the business quickly and was elected partner in the firm in 1980. Fenwick put his theory into practice in 1979 when he was asked to do a curriculum audit for the Columbus, Ohio Public School District. The name was later changed to Curriculum Management Audit during the improvement of the process. An audit investigates three things, two instructional management issues and one learning issue. The first is, does the school system have a properly managed instructional program that is planned, executed, and assessed in accordance with appropriate standards? Immediately, I can see a relation to many of our school's current positions. We are scrambling to make sure our assessments really are in accordance with the standards, not to mention instruction being properly planned and executed. Second, how does the school system conform to the standards of quality in instructional organization? This includes five things. Is there adequacy, specificity, and scope of board policies and planning? Is there sufficient quality in direction for teaching and learning?
is their consistency and equity in schools and program implementation? Is there effectiveness of program and process monitoring and assessment? Is there use and allocations of budget and resources for productivity and quality improvement? The third piece is, are all students achieving success equally and effectively within the school system? And if not, what can be done about it? So you may be asking yourself if these audits are happening today, and the answer is yes. This process Fenwick developed is now owned by a company called Curriculum Management Systems Incorporated, and English serves as the president. Fenwick is also a distinguished professor at University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. A complete list of his books and accomplishments would probably take another 15 minutes. So after all that, I hope you've learned how Fenwick English impacted education in the past and still today.